In this video, we will look at how to simulate rectifier circuits in LTSPICE. Recall that a rectifier circuit converts alternating current to pulsating direct current. There are two main types of rectifier circuits. A half-wave rectifier allows unidirectional current to flow through the load during one half of the input cycle. A half-wave rectifier is constructed by connecting a diode in series with a load resistor. The sinusoidal source is the input to the rectifier circuit and the output voltage is measured across the load resistor. A full-wave rectifier allows unidirectional current to the load during the entire input cycle. A popular construction of the full wave rectifier is the bridge rectifier shown here. It uses four diodes arranged in a bridge configuration. The output voltage is measured across the load resistor RL. Let us see how LT Spice can be used to simulate rectifier circuits. Rectifier circuits can be simulated in LT Spice using the transient simulation option. In LTSPICE on Windows, the simulation options can be accessed by clicking on Simulate and then Edit Simulation command. This brings up the window shown here. We select the Transient tab. Within this tab, we need to properly configure the stop time. The stop time defines the total simulation duration. It can be set depending upon the frequency of the input sinusoid and how many cycles of the input we want to simulate. For instance, if the frequency is 50 Hz, then one time period is 20 milliseconds and setting stop time to 80 milliseconds will simulate four cycles of the input. This edit simulation command automatically generates the First, we look at how to simulate the input to a rectifier circuit. On Windows, we can access the LT Spice component library by clicking on this symbol here. This brings up the window shown here. By typing in voltage, we can access the voltage source and this is the component to use with transient simulations. This voltage source component can be configured to operate as a DC source, an AC source, a pulse source, a sinusoidal source, a piecewise source, an exponential source, or a frequency modulated AC source. For rectifier simulations, we operate this source as a sine source. Let us look at how to properly configure the voltage source as a sine voltage source. This option has seven parameters that need to be configured. DC offset is denoting the DC offset voltage. Amplitude is the peak amplitude of the sinusoid. FREQ is the frequency. T delay is the time delay until the voltage source starts. Theta is the damping factor. A positive value of theta gives an exponentially decreasing amplitude, while a negative value gives an exponentially increasing amplitude. Leaving the value blank or setting it zero gives a constant amplitude sinusoid. PHI phi or is the phase shift of the sinusoid at time t zero and n cycles is the number of cycles. Except for the amplitude and frequency, all other parameters can be left blank for a conventional sinusoidal source. Next, let's look at the diode models available in LTSPICE. In the Select Component Symbol window, we can access the generic diode by typing in diode and placing the diode symbol on the schematic. After placing the diode on the schematic, we can right click and this brings up this window where we can click pick new diode 
and this opens up the diode library available within LTSPICE. LTSPICE has an extensive library of diodes including silicon diodes, Zener diodes, Schottky diodes, switching diodes and many other special purpose diodes. While LTSPICE has a vast library of diodes, the popular rectifier diode models such as 1 and 4002 are not available by default in LTSPICE. To add these models to LTSPICE, navigate to the folder where LTSPICE is installed, then navigate to the CMP folder within the installation. This folder will contain a standard .dio file which has all the diode model definitions in LTSPICE. Open this file in Notepad or any other text editor and copy paste the following lines in this file. Save and exit. This will add the popular rectifier diode models to LTSPICE. Note that the LTSPICE diode models are based on the Shockley equation and its associated parameters. The IN400X family of diodes differs in terms of the maximum reverse DC voltage only. For instance, for the 1N4002 diode, when this diode is off, it can withstand a maximum reverse DC voltage of 100 volts. When this diode is on, the maximum voltage drop across it is 1.1 volts with typical value being 0.7 volts for silicon diodes. And finally, when this diode is on, the maximum average rectified current rating is 1 amp. Once these steps are carried out correctly, then the popular rectifier diode models will show up like this in the select diode window. LTSPICE LT is a node voltage method based simulator, hence we must use a ground. Recall that a ground is a point of reference in the circuit where the voltage is assumed to be zero. In LTSPICE, the ground symbol can be accessed by clicking here. The ground symbol is also used to simplify the way the rectifier circuit is drawn in LTSPICE. This is shown here. This is showing a simplified way to draw a half wave rectifier circuit. Here we are using two ground symbols. This is telling LTSPICE that these two points are in fact the same node and have the zero volt reference voltage. This slide summarizes the theory formulas needed to analyze a half wave rectifier circuit. These can be obtained using any standard textbook on diodes. VOP is, is the peak value of the output voltage and this is equal to the peak value of the input minus the 0.7 volt diode drop. PIV is peak inverse voltage across the diode and this is equal to the peak value of the input voltage. The peak value of the output voltage can be used to work out the average DC value of the half wave rectified waveform as follows. From LTSPICE, we can simulate and obtain V output peak and peak inverse voltage across the diode. This is showing a half wave rectifier circuit in LTSPICE. We are using the 1N4002 diode if we right click the diode symbol and then click pick new diode, this brings up the select diode window and here we can choose any desired diode model. Recall that we added 1N4002 model to the LTSPICE diode library. For this simulation, typical values have been selected for the load resistance and the voltage source. We can right click the voltage source and this brings up the detailed menu. 
uh, the values of the DC offset amplitude and frequency have been entered as shown and if this option is ticked then this information is displayed on the schematic and now this can be conveniently changed by by from the schematic by right clicking this option. We can simulate this circuit by clicking run. We are interested in the input voltage source. So we click here. So this is the applied input voltage source, which is 50 Hertz frequency and 10 volt peak amplitude. And when we click here, we can see the half wave rectified output. We can see that during the positive half cycle, the diode is on. So we get an output voltage waveform shown in blue here. During the negative half cycle of the input, the diode is off. Therefore, the output voltage is zero. We can enable the cursors in LTSPICE as follows. We can right click on any of these top two labels. So if I right click on this label and we can enable the cursor and this brings up the cursor window. Now when I bring the mouse, the cursor changes shape to one and now this can be dragged along the input waveform in green. Suppose we are interested to mark a particular data value, then we can right click and go into draw and select cursor position. And this will label the time and voltage information onto the plot. We can toggle the cursor between the waveforms as follows. So if I right click, if I select this waveform, now the cursor will follow the output which is in blue and we can see that the peak value of the output is 9.3 volts which is 0.7 volts less than the peak value of the input. In order to look at the voltage drop across the diode we proceed as follows. Note that this point in the circuit is node 1. This information is displayed in the bottom left corner. This node in the circuit is node 2. This information can be seen in the bottom left corner. So on the plot, we go right click, add trace. And here we can select voltage at node 1 minus voltage at node 2. And this gives us the red curve, which is the voltage drop across this diode. We can select this trace and we can see that here when we move the cursor. So we enable. So when we move the cursor here, we can see that when the diode is on, the voltage drop across it is approximately 690 millivolts, which is quite close to 0.7 volts. And when the diode is off, so we can zoom to fit. When the diode is off, the peak inverse voltage across the diode is approximately minus 10 volts, which is equal to the peak value of the input waveform. Let us look at the effect of the peak inverse voltage rating of the diode on the performance of the half wave rectifier circuit. Recall that the peak inverse voltage rating of the 1N4002 diode is 100 volts. First, we increase the amplitude of the sinusoidal source to 150 volts. And now we click run. We look at the input voltage. We look at the output voltage and also we look at the voltage drop across the diode. So we go to add traces and then we subtract the two node voltages to get the voltage drop across the diode. 
We can see that when the reverse voltage across the diode exceeds 100 volts, the diode goes into reverse breakdown and starts to conduct again. Thus we get an output voltage here. However, now the circuit is not working as a rectifier since the output which is shown in dark blue here is not unidirectional anymore. Thus for proper operation of a half wave rectifier, the peak amplitude of the input sinusoidal wave must be less than the peak inverse voltage rating of the diode. This slide summarizes the theory formulas needed to analyze a full wave rectifier circuit. Specifically, the peak value of the output voltage is the input voltage peak minus 2.7 volt diode drops. This is because in a diode bridge rectifier, two diodes are on at any given time and two diodes are off. The peak inverse voltage for each diode is the input voltage peak minus 0.7 volts. The peak value of the output voltage can be related to the average DC value of the full wave rectified output as shown here. From LT Spice, we can simulate and obtain V output peak and peak inverse voltage across the diode. This is showing a full wave rectifier in LT Spice. In LT Spice, it is not possible to rotate diodes by 45 degrees. Thus, the diode bridge is drawn as shown here. We can run this simulation. And now when I click here, we can see that we get the output voltage waveform and this is a full wave rectified waveform. In order to display the input voltage and the voltage drop across a diode, we proceed as follows. Note that the sine voltage source is connected between nodes 1 and node 3. This information is displayed in the bottom left corner. Similarly, if we take diode D1, this diode is connected between nodes 1 and node 2. Thus, we go to the plot window, right click, add traces, and here we subtract the voltage at node 1 and node 3, and this gives us the applied 10 volt 50 hertz sine wave shown here in blue. Similarly, we go add trace and we subtract the voltages at node 1 and node 2 and this shows the voltage across diode voltage drop across diode d1 we enable the cursor by clicking any of these top labels and this shows the cursor window so we can drag the cursor which is now moving across the waveform uh, in light green and this is the output waveform we can see that the peak value of the output voltage waveform is 8.61 volts and this is approximately 1.4 volts less than 10 volts which is the peak value of the input waveform. We can look at the voltage drop across the diode. When the diode is on it has 685 millivolt voltage drop across it which is quite close to 0.7 volts. We can position the cursor to measure the peak inverse voltage across the diode. We can see that the maximum reverse voltage across the diode is approximately 9.3 volts and this is 0.7 volt less than the 10 volt peak. So this shows how a full wave rectifier circuit can be simulated in LT Spice. Thank you for watching this video and I hope that you can now confidently use LT Spice to simulate rectifier circuits and advance your understanding of rectifier circuits.